another thing you can observe is you know the abundance of corals on a flat top surface. So here I'm taking you on a little dive and you can see we see this nice branching corals, lots of fish, we have the two um, divers there. But what I want you to notice is that as we move away from the crest of this reef, just now, you see as the divers are going much uh, further down on the reef, you can start to see that there are less and less corals ahead of them. You see that? And you can also see that the waters are darker. You see that rock here at the, at the back is devoid of corals. And that's because it's deeper. And we need to talk about the control of light penetration on um, autotroph organisms, on the T factory. So here's a theoretical graph that shows on the horizontal axis light intensity and or carbonate production. So light intensity is the dashed black line and the red line is carbonate production. The vertical axis is depth. Notice that all of these do not have scale. Okay, they're scaleless. They're, it's a conceptual diagram. We'll talk in a minute why this is a conceptual diagram at this point. But what I want to show you is that as you go further in the water column, light gets, gets absorbed. So you see we have a, a zone at the top of the water column where we have a lot of light right at the top. And this light decreases rapidly until what is known as the base of the light saturation zone. So the top is the light saturation zone. And then at that point, when most of the light has been absorbed, you have you know, still a, a slow decrease in light absorption, but there's already quite, um, already most of the light has been absorbed until you reach what is known as the base of the euphotic zone. Below the euphotic zone, there is no light, okay? Now look at the red curve, the carbonate production curve. It's very clear that carbonate production for autotrophs is maximum into the, the zone of light saturation, where you have lots of light, you have lots of autotroph production, which is normal because autotrophs need light to grow. They, they are photosynthetic organisms or they have photosynthetic symbionts. As we get towards the base of the light saturation zone, we see a net decrease in the carbonate production and that decrease continues into the euphotic zone until the base of the euphotic zone, at which point we have no production. So light penetration is extremely important for carbonate production. And to bring this point home here, I'm showing you some actual data from the Bahamas, looking at one type of coral, it's the Montastrea annularis. And basically what we have here is we have predicted growth of this particular coral in green dashed line. So that's the theoretical model. And then we have observed growth rates. So the growth rates are on the horizontal axis. They are in millimeter per year. And the vertical axis is depth below sea surface. And you can see that the maximum production of that coral in the Bahamas happens in the first 10 meters of the water column. So really shallow water condition are favorable to autotroph uh, carbonate production. And that means they're favorable to T factory settings. And then we have a net decrease of that growth and already at 25 meters, there is almost no growth. The growth is so reduced that these corals effectively will die eventually if they get any further deep. So let's see how light penetration impacts the different factories. So we'll start first by looking at what happens to the T factory. And the T factory, because it's so dependent on light, you can see that it's production. So this graph shows us meters uh, in, in terms of water depths on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis is production. Zero to one, one being maximum production. And we've already talked about this. The T factory has a maximum production very shallow in the water column. You can see that in the first few meters of the water column, we have maximum production. Certainly at 100 meter, in most locations around the world, that production has ceased. How about the other factories? The M factory is dominated by microbial mud. So it tends to be less sensitive to water depth and it tends to actually produce large volume of sediments just like the T factory does. 
You will notice that there is an area here in the shallow water where the M factory is not producing that much. The reason for this is that there's probably competition from the T factory. So it's just the fact that we have the T factory over competing the M factory in the modern world that we don't see a lot of production of the M factory in the shallow waters. But if you look at the Paleozoic, that might have been very different. We might have had high production of M factory in the shallow waters. But what limits the production of the M factory is mostly nutrient supply. It's not light penetration. How about the C factory? Well, the C factory, just like the M factory, is not limited by light penetration. Remember, C organisms control precipitation, and so they require nutrients, they do not require light. So we tend to have a relatively uh, monotonous production of C factory organism throughout the water column. But notice something very important here. That is that the production of the C factory is never one. It's below one. And this is to indicate that the volume of sediments coming from these factories is, is very low. It is not as high as the T factory. So really, again, the most you know, the most abundant production of carbonate comes from the T factory and the M factory, although the M factory is less uh, abundant in the modern world, but the C factory does not produce that much sediment. So how does that impact the geometry of the different factories? Well, again, let's start with the T factory. The T factory, because it requires shallow water condition to grow, will need to keep up with sea level. It will need to grow very close from sea level. So you'll tend to have sharp, sharp flat top close to sea level or at sea level. This sh uh, flat top can either be completely uh, flat or can have a lagoon if accommodation is not completely filled. And because we've already said that the tea factory also is characterized by a lot of cementation, the geometry of the T factory can be pretty steep. You can have steep sided. How about the C factory? The C factory actually does not really care about light penetration. So you will have equal production throughout the profile of the C factory. And even you might have localized production around methane seeps or other sources of nutrients. Also, the C factory lacks the cement required to obtain a steep-sided geometry. So the C factory tends to be much more um, similar to classic system in terms of forming clinoformal geometries and essentially broad, um, broad and thin layers of um, sediment throughout the shelf. The M factory tends to form mud mounds, so mounded structure. These tend to be cemented early as well, but again, they're not so dependent on light penetration. So unlike the T factory, they're not that tied to um, light penetration being a major factor controlling them. But we will see that this might not have been the case in older M factories.